so should i write import scale on not linear model hmm. then yes sir linear regression um, import not linear regression and not so it was from scale on to linear model yes import right. linear regression and logistic regression So now I'm working with logistics. So I'm going to take its logistic regression. And next, SQLand dot matrix. Hmm. Yes. Accuracy score. Confusion matrix. Confusion matrix. Next. Model selection. Hmm. Train test kit. How many have you uh, done the thing what I discussed yesterday? Okay, let's do up quickly all the things. Drop all the null values first of all. Let's see df dot drop n a and in place you. Yes, what is the use of in place? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> To change the data uh, data frame according to the uh, function given, like if we uh, do the in, uh, in place or equals to false, it will not change the and then change it. Hmm. Okay, correct. All right. So uh, let's see something. Is it correct? Like uh, age, you can say on age. Yeah, face it rate of age, right? So, for to make a face it rate, H is equals to S N S dot. The face it rate kind of a histogram you can say on, right? So, our data is D T, and then we can say that we want to see the column. Let's say for we are looking for the survival. So, survived, and then plot this. Instagram. Let's see plotting the age, and I say my respectively classes of the bins to be twenty. Let's see, and BT is not defined. Oh, okay, we have BF. There comes that these are the ages where the people or the passengers have survived, and uh, on the left, like in the left hand side, there is something which is not survived. Okay. So there is no null values as I have removed all the null values. So not looking on the, the total null values. Uh, yesterday I also made some uh, dummy values for the boolean things, right? So what to do? Like let's convert the things again, right? Get dummies, and I'm going to drop the first. Same I did with the classes and all. Right, uh, the classes and the embarked. I I think I did the same with that. Okay. 
and what was there and back. Okay, done right. So now, oh. like, yeah. So what's this drop first equals to true? Why does it use? Okay, see, like if I say. you see the data frame of the sex right now so it would be like male and female okay like what happens see uh, in this particular column the sex column what is there there is male and females now if I'm trying to make a discrete value or I, if I'm trying to get a dummy value this makes a discrete value either 1 or 0 like if it is if, if there is a data for that particular column like right? the individual unique values will be split it in some kind of columns like male will be one column female will be one column if we talk about the uh, classes then first will be one column second will be one column third will be one column right so what happens that if it is a male the first one if this is a female then obviously the female is going to be one and the male is going to be the zero right because this is a female this is not a male right the first column so similarly the second one is also a female not a male the sixth one is a male not a female that means right so uh, for any training data set i can also identify from this particular column from the male even that this is a female this is a female this is a male right so i don't require this female column from this column only i can get it there right so um, there is no such like uh, problem if you keep both the things but uh, in case like if you keep all those columns which is not even necessary which is not very important you can go without that also so if you keep those things too then like uh, it would be a fact of overfitting your model okay so I usually remove this right because one could be better right so what we do is we write drop first right that is drop the first column only keep the second column that's it right so now if I see my column it would be only one and I can easily identify okay well, first one is the female second one is the female so third one is the male okay fourth one is the female understood okay sir okay all right so this is like not concatenating up so this will be pd dot concat right Concat df, concat embark, concat the class, concat the sex, and contact them on the axis one. And there you can see the second. Right? The second has got one column, the third has got one column, the male has got one column, the Q and S has got one column. Right? Okay, that it was exactly like uh, we don't have any first column, we don't have any female column, we don't have any chair column. Right? This Q stands for Queenstown, S for Southampton, and then this, these are the classes second and the third, and then the male or the females are there. Right? and so the things over there okay so now we don't require this class p class the, we don't require the sex we don't require this uh, what who class embark down alive alone so what i'll do is i'll remove up these things right okay so df dot so we can say that
unwanted columns for trading. This could help you in the visualizations, but not in the trading part, right? So dropping and what to drop? This X column, right? The P class, the embarked. What is there much? Embarked down. Live. So I think that's uh, fine. Anything and everything not left because the rest are important. Let's see what comes. All right, so dropping all these from the XS1. Yeah, TF is oh, oops, oops, oops. oops. I made it equals to that. That's a problem. Again, it's So I've got survive column, which is like uh, the our objective. Basically, we have got age column, siblings and spouses, parents and childrens, affairs, Queenstown, the Southampton, the second class, the third class, uh, and the mail. Right? Okay. Fine. Now these are the things, or these are the columns which uh, with which we are going to train our data sets. Right? So let's make the training part. Yes, any, anyone can uh, say what are the features I'm going to take? What should be my X? DF. Yes, then what should be my X? with which we should like go for our features <coughs> sorry yes quickly okay see y is one of the thing which we are going to predict and the rest becomes your x right so what is going to be the x what is my y what is the objective objective is y right objective is y So uh, objective is why then survived is my objective because I need to predict the survival. This really we discussed, right? So apart from the survived, what are the things? All these are my features. So what I will take the df dot drop, right? Drop the survived and keep everything as the feature. Same for the Y, we'll say the DF of only survived column. That's it. Okay. Understood anyone having any difficulty? I think no. Right. So that's being your X and Y. Now, if I say x dot head, what you can see? 
eight siblings and all those such things. Now look on to the shape of this DF for now. 182 columns, oh sorry, 182 rows over 10 columns, right? What is the shape of this X? And what's the shape of this Y? That is having 182 rows. Now X is having 182 rows over 9 columns. Not 10 columns. Over 9 columns. Got it? Over 9 columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I think it's 10, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, 9. Okay, fine. Right? Because we have removed 1. Okay? That is X. That is your X. Removing the survival. Right? If you look onto the DF, DF is having even the survival. But we are not having the survival 1. Okay? And Y is all about the, uh, the values of like uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 and all, right? Okay? Fine. So, you have seen. Now, what's the part is? Like to split up the data. Splitting the data. So, for that, what you have to do is? You have to give x train then x test y train y test equals to what is that train test split right what do you have to split x and the y and giving the test size as let's say 0.33 and the random state should be 1 okay for once, I'm going to train my data. That's it, right? Okay, done the splitting. Done. Now, see x train dot shape, y train dot shape. What is there? From 182 data, you are going to train with 121 data. right going to train with 121 data and you are going to test with 61 data right the rest 61 data is going to be train uh, testing part right i said that from the total data you took a small part of the data for testing and the rest is going to be the for the training part right okay fine now Let's give a name to the model. Let's say this to be a Titanic. Let's say this to be a T I. Let's say we give the full name Titanic, right? So what we have to do is we have to pass this logistic regression function to this, right? And then we have to fit the values of X train and the white train to this to this model right and done okay that is done right now after making the model what i said what you have to do is you have to make your predictions so predict the x test oops spelling error so predict predicting the x test you can see the values of predictions right and you see the values of x test these are the values of x test like this is x test basically so you look onto your y test these are your values of your y test. Now let's make an MP array of this and then print it. So these are the values of your y test. Okay. So now we need to compare this. These are the actual values, right? 
what I said, we actually need to compare the, our predictions and the actual values and we'll see what is the accuracy of our model. So these are the actual values, y test. Okay. And these are the predictions what is being made there. Right. So what is the prediction comes? We have to see that. Right. Okay. That is, if we compare of the predictions versus this. So the pred equal equals to this. So these are the places where uh, we only have the false values. Okay, that is these are the places which are not true. I can copy and for the pred. You take in two columns. Hmm, too many indices, right? What is there? So among this all outputs, whatever we have got, like these are the false output. So the length of false outputs. 18 wrong out of 61. What should be the accuracy? Anyone can tell? Yes. What could be the accuracy? Okay, for that we have something called as accuracy. Seventy percent. Hmm. What, what you say? Seventy percent. Seventy percent. Let's see. So the accuracy score. So for uh, if we want to calculate the accuracy score, it what we have to do is between what we are going to calculate the accuracy score. The predictions versus the y test, right? And that has to be multiplied by 100. So 20.49. Oh, well, that's correct, right? Okay. So this is the accuracy score of the model 70%, okay, approximately 70.5%, you can say. Right, it's four nine one something. So we can say on seventy point five percent. So that's it, accuracy of this one, right? And rest other what other features you want to see, everything comes under the classification report. Classification report of the Y test. With the prediction. So precision of 78%, recall 78, F1 score is 40 and this thing is 5, accuracy we have got for 70% and that's okay, fine. Okay, so these are the things basically you should take it and this comes in the evaluation part. Okay, this is the model evaluation. This is what we are going to do is after this, uh, let's make it one. Yeah. Say this is the model evaluation. Okay. And now we are going to 
do the last step that is model prediction so model prediction what should be done for predicting up the things yes okay one more thing one more thing uh, something is left i think something we are missing yeah confusion matrix we are missing in confusion matrix if i say so confusion matrix of let's say for y uh, y test and the predictions will compare the zeros and the one accordingly so what we are getting that is 129931 what does this means we have discussed this on like i think on friday or thursday can anyone say what is this yes we we'll discuss this one <laughs> confusion matrix yes yeah, okay i am giving a hint uh, four values are your true negatives true positives false negatives and false positives okay again uh, i will giving you one more hint see these are your predictions the values and these are your actual values okay one minute can we do this one Forty. What is that? Twenty one. Uh, can you relate something this forty and twenty one with this? Quick. Any hands that you want more or any kind of? What do you think, anyone? See, this is the last night. Last class is going on right now. So, what do you think? You can speak out like anything. What do you think? Am I audible to you, right? Hello, hello, hello. Okay. See, you have thirty one and you have nine. Can you relate this? Thirty one and nine. That means forty. So total true is forty, and total false is twenty one. Out of which, out of which, how many you made true when the predictions? How many true was there? That is forty total, right? Are you getting the things? Out of this forty true things, uh, out of this twenty one false, you can say. Right? If we compare up the things like uh, the predictions versus, uh, we did it somewhere else in the beginning. Let me make it. Right? Yeah. So these all eighteen, these all the eighteen things. What we are, what you are getting over there, the eighteen. Eighteen are the false predictions, basically. We we'll say that that predicted values, predicted values are what is the what is the predicted value? Thirty one, right? Thirty one correct 
9 false. 12 correct, 9 false. I got it that. Right? Confusion matrix tells you about this, right? The true positive, true negatives and all. Okay, let me give you one more example, a very quick and very easy example. You will better understand it accordingly. Okay. Like if I say, let's take x and y such things like, okay. So let's say x to be np dot range. You could hear me, right? Anyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. I think I thought something is missing from my voice. So reshape of minus one and let's take y. Let's say this to be np dot array and zero 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 one 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 one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many ones? One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's take one more. So total one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, I think. Right? I mean they're there. One, three, seven, yeah. Okay, this is my X and Y right now. Okay, I need some more spaces. So if I look on to my x and y, this is my x, array of this is also till 9 and this is my y, array of all this, minus 1 and 1. Right? Okay, I'm going to create a model, I'm going to train this for predicting this 0 and 1 very correctly. Right, so what I can do is, model, I can give its logistic regression. And I can say, uh, like, just to pass on the thing, I'm not going to make much over there, right, so passing this value of this all right and I'm going to fit the values of x and y accordingly right what are for incomplete variables oh that is small x okay and so what are the basic uh, classes in your model you can see that is only 0 and 1 what okay, we are going to see right and then you have also the intercepts and all right so model intercept when you have lot of features then you have lot of intercepts and from there you have to take uh, you choose the accurate one right machine automatically chooses that so you don't have to focus on much right so like predicting like if you go for getting up the predictions and all so what you do is model dot break the values of x that's it and we have got 0 0 0 and rest everything as 1 even right if we compare up with the y even that is total 100% right we are getting up here we can see other things right so let's see our score model dot score of x and the y 100%. When you have very less data, you get a good score. That was that what I was saying. So let's make a changes in our 0 and 1. So this is our prediction. And you can see this is predict and this is your y right so you can see this this is predicting 0 0 0 0 and the solve and you are getting 0 0 0 1 1 1 0 and something like this right so prediction value now changes 80 percent see doing a bit change can uh, change your total data right now let me give you the uh, confusion things between the confusion matrix and all right Students have had a lot of confusion in this. So let's make a confusion matrix. Now you'll be able to understand it better. Confusion matrix of the, uh, let's say for the Y and the model dot predict of X. What you can see, 3, 1, 5, 1, 5. 3, 1, 1, 5. What does this mean now? 
what it gives 3115 the first row indicates the false uh, values in which the first column indicates the actual false values hmm. and the one is the predicted one which is actually not a false value and in the okay. second row it is the uh, true values and the first row indicates the wrong true hmm. and predicted and the five indicates the correct true and predicted yeah good so three is predicted correctly and one is wrong there right and here in the ones in the ones one so we have total five corrected values and one wrong that's the thing or you can say three is correct one is wrong five is correct one is wrong okay same with this where it is gone prediction yeah so 31 is correct 9 is wrong 12 is correct 9 is wrong okay in this prediction now it is clear to everyone anyone having more confusion with this right confusion matrix so it gives you no, sir. true positive true negative false positive false negatives okay all these things and you get a confusion good confusion matrix of the sort right you can even make it a uh, a box type of thing and you can get the other things right so accuracy scores and all have been given right so that is how we work on this kind of things okay right so you can make a graph kind of thing like if you want uh, for making your confusion matrix right so actual predicted zeros or ones like uh, let me show you if i make graph let me try let me make it Eight by eight to two, four by four. I am sure means for image showing. Okay, is used in AI as well. Computer vision part. Now about the grid, we have discussed what is grid means, right? So so now taking up the text like predicted zeros. predicted ones wait right. uh, next for the zero and one same so uh, here we'll be writing up actual zeros and the actual ones And now setting the y limits from 1.5 to 0.5, and if you take minus, it will be better. So now uh, to be making the two boxes, right? Uh, sorry, the four boxes we need, right? So we are using the for loop. So for i in a range of two, and inside that we have to do one more loop that is for j in a range of two again. What you can do is we can make boxes and even we can write in that boxes. So we'll uh, take it like j i and inside the cm we have to write right i and j. 
and the positions to be given at the center. V A is to be the center. And the color of the font, let's say to be white would work or uh, no. I think it comes. that has done if it works function object has no attribute of set in the fifth column oh, 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 oh. it should be x and y done so you have actual zeros three right and predicted like predicted zeros and actual zeros have been given predicted ones and the actual ones have been given i think that is clear right now so total was four you predicted three correct and one false the actual ones were five one six you predicted five correct and one false so with the box i think that is clear to you right you can make with the box you can if i take something with colors black would not work oh, this is fine okay that is how we go for the confusion matrix on our right so that's the thing basically so you can get a predicted table you can get a lot of things summary and all i think you can get a summary uh, if you go with the results and all That fit with giving you the values that it works in SVM. All right, so fine. So we were predicting the Titanic model. That's the final thing we have to do. All right, so how to be uh, predicting the model, right? How we are going to predict the model? How we are going to predict the survival for now? For an unwanted, uh, because machine learning, what it's, what I said that the machine could predict the values even it get an unseen data, right? So now if we if we want to predict up the things for the Titanic, so before prediction, you should know that what are the columns you should give the what are the values you should give to your columns, right? So you should look on to your X train. First, you, you should look on your training data and you should look the train head of such one data so that you could get it like, okay, you have to give value something like that, right? So now you're going to predict up, let that training dot predict. So let's take, if, I, if we talk about like, uh, if the age of the person is uh, 78.3, okay? Siblings is zero. Parents, students, let's take one. Fair is almost 187. Let's take something accordingly. Queenstown, no. Southampton, yes. Second, let's take zero. Third, let's take one. Male, let's take no. Expecting 2D. Okay, it should be 2D. So, Okay, this is survived, right? You can see, survived. Answer coming as survived, even if you take something like this, right? So, what are the features, like, what changes we should take it as not survival? Okay, so if it is a male, that is, it is not going to survive. Okay, if it is a female, it is going to survive. That's only one factor that could change your values. Even. Let's make it more, uh, something like, uh, changes in this zero so not survive still not surviving okay increasing the fare still not surviving siblings no 
view still okay so you can see that six minutes matters a lot here right even the age and all like prayers and nothing is working out if it is something 80 still oh so see females and males matter a lot like if it is a male if it is a female because if we see the graph like if, you, if you see the graph and all df dot count plot who is working there sns dot count plot of we can see that see the number of like, uh, like giving it a few semantical key if you get an understanding the number of uh, female is much better than the number of males if you can see the one you've got if one is this then there is a male and this is all about the females and you can see of the values it's pretty very larger right so that's being a model training out with the best things right and that is how we deal up with the things